Hey budget gardeners, Vita Loca here. Join me today as I show you how to put your amaryllis in for dormancy. So let's go. Summer to early fall is the best time to be taking your amaryllis in for dormancy. It is now beginning of October. Technically, I could have started this process sometime in August, but I had other things going on. And honestly, for me, it doesn't matter what time of year the amaryllis bloom. I just want it to be sometime during the winter months when here in New Hampshire, it is cold and snowing outside. I just want to enjoy my blooms indoors. But if I did want the blooms for Christmas time, then I would have had to have brought my amaryllis in for dormancy sometime around the middle of August. I want to just give you a high level time frame of when you want to be doing different jobs. You'll notice that my bulbs are in pots. I could have opted to take in these bulbs and put them out in my landscape. And then at that point, what I would be doing right now is digging these bulbs out of my landscape. But I chose to keep them in their pots, but they were outdoors during the whole summer. Some of you, if you have bulbs from last winter, may have opted to keep your bulbs indoors during the summer months. And that's perfectly fine too. The rules that we're gonna to cover today will still apply in terms of what to do next to put your bulbs in dormancy. And typically August through October is a great time to be bringing your amaryllis in for dormancy. What I mean by that is I have these amaryllis bulbs here and they've been outside all summer long and they've been getting bigger, they've had some water, they've had some sunlight, and the energy has been stored inside of the bulb. And now is the time to put these bulbs to sleep. And what you wanna do is you wanna take the bulbs and put them in dormancy in a cool, dark place, and you wanna keep those bulbs there at a minimum for six weeks, but more like eight to 10 weeks. And you don't wanna be giving the bulbs any more water, you basically just want the bulbs to rest. And you can either keep the bulbs in a pot like this, or you can take the bulbs out of the pot and just have them bare root. That's how I did it last year, and that's how I prefer to do it. So I figured we might as well do this together. I'm gonna go ahead and take the bulb out of the pot. And you just wanna be very gentle when you're pulling the bulb out of the pot. And wow, you can see that the amaryllis really put on a lot of nice roots during the year. So now that this amaryllis bulb is out of the pot, what we're going to do is try to take off some of the soil from the bulb. And we can just do that with our hands. And it's okay if some of the roots come off because ultimately all of these roots will be coming off once the bulb has dried. And you can see that it has a really good root system. And what I'm gonna do with this bulb is I'm just gonna place it in this tray over here. I'm gonna keep it in my garage for about two to three days, just so that this bulb and the roots can dry a little bit more. And then after two or three days, I'm gonna be storing all my bulbs in the basement. The basement is a very cool place in my house. So it's a perfect place for these bulbs to rest. Typically, you want to have labels or tags for your amaryllis bulbs, but honestly, I don't mind if I don't keep the tags or labels. I'm just happy to have the bulbs, I'm happy to overwinter them, and I'm happy to have blossoms every year. However, with a few of them, I did keep the names, and the name of this one here is called Pink Blush. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and take these two bulbs out the same way that we just did this one here, and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Now these two bulbs are out of their pots, and I wanted to mention this large one here is called Apple Blossom. It's very pretty. So now we're gonna work on this one here, and I did have a tag, but I can't read it. <laughs> the uh, marker has uh, been wiped off, so I can't read what it says on there. The good news is I do have um, the tags indoors that these bulbs each came with, and so when they do bloom, then I can relabel each of the bulbs with the appropriate name. So this one here has one mother plant in the center, 
and then it has two little baby plants or bulblets on either side. And there's two schools of thought. One school of thought is to keep the bulblets attached to the mom as long as possible until the bulblets come off on their own. And the other school of thought is to go ahead and remove the bulblets and they should still grow and be fine. That's my belief. And after doing much research, it sounds like a lot of people have done that. They've removed the babies from the mom. And basically the goal is you're teaching the little bulblets to grow on their own, knowing that this coming winter, they're not gonna bloom, but that's okay. You're trying to basically bulk up the bulb and get the bulb to get bigger. It's a great way to propagate your amaryllis collection. So that's what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to take this out of the pot and I'm gonna show you how to divide the amaryllis. Okay, so I got all the soil off of this and now I'm just gonna show you how to remove the bulblets from the mother plant. It's actually pretty simple. I'm just going to be able to tug and pull them apart. If you did want, you could dunk this whole thing into water just to get even more of the soil off. But it looks like the babies are ready to go and be uh, taken off from the mom plant. So you just want to very gently tug away the baby from the mom. And it's very important that the baby has plenty of roots on it. If the baby doesn't have a lot of roots on it, it's probably not a good idea to remove the baby plant from the mom plant. And in that case, you would be planting both of them still together during the winter months. But you can see that the baby has plenty of roots on it. And again, it's very likely not going to bloom for another one to two years, but I'm still going to treat it just like it's mom plant. And I'm going to make sure that I bulk it up so that one day it's ready to bloom. Okay, let's remove the other bublet from its mom. And it also has a very good root system going on for it. How cool is that? Now we turn one amaryllis bulb into three. Very exciting. So this tray here has potting mix, but it's been depleted of nutrients. And it also has a lot of the roots from the amaryllis bulbs. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in my compost pile so that it can break down and I can reuse it uh, as compost. So now the question is, what do I do with these guys? You'll notice I kept the leaves on here. Some people cut them off immediately, as well as the roots in the bottom. I prefer to keep both on. I believe that it's still feeding the bulb for a little while, so it's my preference to keep these on. And again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in my garage for about two to three days. I'm gonna let the roots as well as the leaves dry off a little bit. And after the two or three days is up, at that point, I can go ahead and cut these leaves off as well as the roots. And I can cut the roots right to the base of the plant. I just want to be careful not to nick the bulb. You want to be careful about that. And then I'm going to take the tray of bulbs and I'm going to bring it down to my basement. And the bulbs are going to stay there for about eight weeks. It can be a few weeks less, a few weeks more, but general rule of thumb is about eight weeks. So I'll just put it on my calendar so I remember. And after eight weeks is up, I will then basically take the bulbs out of dormancy. Even though I'll be making a video in the future of what to do to take your bulbs out of dormancy, I'll tell you at a high level the next steps. So in about eight weeks, I will bring these bulbs back upstairs. And if I do need to clean anything else off of the bulbs, I'll do so at that time. For example, I may need to take off a little bit of this wrapper material that's around the bulb just to clean it up a little. So that's a good time to clean up my bulb. And then I'm going to get some pots that are nice and clean and sterilized. They very well could be these pots here. And I'm going to put fresh potting mix in it. You definitely want to use potting mix. You don't want to use garden soil. Uh, and you want to make sure you're using fresh mix. I don't want to use the same potting mix that I used this past season. And the key is when I'm putting the bulb in the pot, 
you don't want the soil all the way to the top. You want to have it about halfway around the bulb. And you want to make sure that the bulb is placed inside the pots nice and firm so it's not moving around. You want to give it a small drink of water and then you want to put it in a nice warm sunny location like a windowsill. And the temperature should be somewhere around 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And that will tell the bulb to wake up and over time you will see your bulb start to sprout just like this. And the key during that time is to continue watering your bulb, fertilizing your bulb, making sure it's in a warm, sunny location, and eventually you will get blossoms. But if you don't get blossoms, maybe it could be that the bulb was not ready to give blooms this year, just like these little baby bulblets. I won't get blossoms from them, but I will still be treating them just like the big bulbs. And that's okay. I am just preparing them to become a big bulb. When you bring the bulbs out of dormancy and you're giving them water, you're giving them fertilizer, they're in a warm, sunny location, you should see the blooms in about eight weeks after bringing them out of dormancy. And then basically the cycle just repeats itself. Hopefully this video was helpful for you in terms of what to do with your amaryllis bulbs if you have them and you wanna put them in dormancy. However, let's say you don't have any amaryllis bulbs, but you find this whole process very interesting and you want to give it a try. I highly recommend that you look for amaryllis bulbs. A lot of the big box stores and nurseries have them during the winter months and give it a try. Instead of treating the amaryllis bulb as an annual, try to treat it as a perennial, as a plant that you keep for a long time. And then you can follow this whole process next year. I hope you found this information helpful and until the next video, make it a great day with gardening.